Hi, it's Noel Williams, Optimal Health Associates, September 22nd, 2021. We're getting into the season. We're entering the fourth quarter. So we get really busy at the office, or busier, I should say. A big shout out, thank you to everyone in my office, all my PAs, nurse practitioners, front office staff, especially the front office staff, and the MAs who are dealing with a lot of cranky humans, cranky humans. So uh, sorry. Uh, that people are being cranky to you, but I appreciate you as do all the other providers. Big shout out to my partners, Ben and uh, Cassie, um, who are working real hard and their teams also. So keep at it and hold your head up high. I know you're doing a good job, even in the face of uh, how the world has gotten crazy because everyone's stressed out. And why are we stressed out? Because COVID just won't go away, nor is it going to. I'm gonna summarize that in a minute. Um, but the reason that it's so crazy is because the misinformation is so out of control from the one end of the people who think that the vaccine has microbots in it and is trying to control us to the other end with the mandatory masking and stupid crap like that. Because let's be honest for a second. Do you think all the celebrities wouldn't have worn masks at the Emmys if there was even a question of it being useful? No, it's not useful. Why do politicians never wear masks in Washington when there's no cameras on? Because it's not useful. They put them on when the cameras are on. There's t tons of shots of them doing that and going through that process. Masking is not an effective tool. It is a short-term mitigation strategy that was useful back at the beginning when we didn't know a lot about COVID to try to inhibit spread. As the data came out over time, it pretty much showed that masking really didn't do much, okay? And there's still no data showing it does. It's totally meaningless with Delta. It is so much more infectious and so much more, replica it replicates so much faster. I don't believe for a second it works. There's no data showing it works. It's just about making people have rules that they don't need to have. So you have that crazy group here and we have the other crazy group here. And so what we're trying to do is get in the middle, but the middle ground is hard to be in because you get criticized then from both sides. And that makes reasonable people start to feel frustrated. So the first thing to remember is Delta's starting to calm down a little bit in Oklahoma. It's gonna, it's whipped through the country, it is going to slowly calm down through the country now over the next four to six weeks. But Delta has taught us a very important thing, which I don't know if anyone said, um, but I'm going to say it. Vaccination isn't going to be the solution. Do we want everyone vaccinated? Yes, because it's going to limit the, the intensity of the disease but vaccination will not solve COVID because Delta makes vaccinated people sick a third of the time, roughly. But again, it's mild to moderate illness with less than one, well, one to 3% severe illness. So, but the issue is since it's gonna replicate in vaccinated people, it is going to continue to change and infect people. So what is going to have to happen is at some point, we either are going to need an outpatient therapy that actually works, that you can treat people with like Tamiflu or something, not that Tamiflu works that well, but think of like a, a antiviral like an, that would work like an antibiotic for strep. And we actually have it, it's called Ivermectin, but thankfully uh, Pfizer is now has a trial, as I've mentioned, for a Ivermectin analog, a protease inhibitor, in it, which is what ivermectin is, it's, the exact, it's pretty much gonna be the exact same thing. But until we get that and acknowledge that nutrition is the key, we are gonna be stuck with people getting really sick from COVID because we're not, we're not all gonna ever get vaccinated and vaccinated people are gonna get the virus. And so it's gonna keep on mutating and it's just the nature of what's gonna happen. We had high hopes, I had high hopes that it would come under control with the vaccine and natural immunity, but COVID outmutated what we thought. So it is here to stay for a while and it will be a while, but that's okay. We can adjust to it as long as there's truth. So the truths are, we're gonna need an outpatient therapy that the FDA recognizes. So they're never gonna rec recognize ivermectin because they don't care about science. So the only thing they're gonna care about is a medicine that 
is novel, quote unquote, and new from uh, Pfizer or some big pharma company. And lo and behold, then they'll think it's important enough to approve, even though you have the exact same thing readily available. And that's what will happen. But keep in mind, the FDA has made huge, huge mistakes already with drug approval processes for this. The remdesivir data is atrocious. The European trial just came out, which showed it had no effect. It was useless. It was always useless. They changed the endpoint. The FDA changed the endpoint of the study to try to find a useful thing in it, which was it shortened hospitalization, but didn't change death. What utter baloney that was. And that wasn't what the study was about in the first place. So when you change your primary evaluatory point of a study to a secondary point and sh shut the study off early because you know you're going to fail showing that it actually works, and then you radically move forward the approval process, and the approval process is done by people in the FDA who are all paid consultants by Gilead, or the vast majority were. So you get a drug like remdesivir that didn't do anything and harm people and cost $2.7 billion uh, in the United States so far for no, no benefit and harm, but whatever. So that's why people are frustrated because they can't make heads or tails out of it. So. Delta's going to start getting better. We'll have mu or mu or whatever <laughs> it's called. And we're going to have some other ones. So it's about nutrition, 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 nutrition. What makes your vaccine work better? What makes your natural immunity, if you've had COVID, work better? What makes your immune system better and stronger if you haven't been vaccinated or haven't gotten COVID? Appropriate nutrition. Having good levels of vitamin D having zinc in your system, having iodine in your system, having a multivitamin. So a multivitamin has a lot of this in it already. So that's really what you wanna think about again. You wanna think about your D and your fish oil, your melatonin. You know, we have to go back to the basics for our immune system and we're gonna be okay. Now in terms of the booster, I have notified the government they could send my booster down to uh, Texas and give it to the uh, migrants who they're flooding into the country who are COVID positive and COVID not positive and just vaccinate them as they come in because the booster for me has no clinical utility because it's not going to help someone with a normal immune system who's been vaccinated already. And it is highly, highly, highly unlikely it's going to add much to anyone who's been infected in the past with a normal immune system and recovered. So we should take all those boosters and start vaccinating the people who are flooding into the country who aren't vaccinated to help stop the spread of COVID. But that's my opinion. So that's my summary tonight. Really, we just have to, we have to just bear with all the baloney. We have to ignore all the fake news from both sides of the aisle and just try to be in the middle and follow the science and be nice to people and be nice to someone. Every day I want you to think, who was I nice to today? Because chances are a lot of the people you're encountering have had negative experiences with people already who are all stressed out. So be a, be a light in their life and try to be nice. I don't really have much else to add except thanks Kim for your help. And thanks to my great office staff and all the referring doctors we send to who take care of our patients. Uh, they're wonderful and be nice to your healthcare providers, your clerks, your storekeepers, everyone. Don't yell at people. <laughs> Stop yelling at people. Stop. It doesn't help you. It makes you not liked. So be nice. That's it.